In today's video, we're going to discuss the possibility of the rebuilding Philadelphia Flyers trading goal to the Carter Hart to the Montreal Canadiens this summer. Plus, we have a big update on the Ottawa Senators sale. We have a lot of details on some of the bidders and next steps. We also have several updates around the NHL injury list right now. Plus, the NHL today also announced the new uh, jersey supplier for beyond this season. And we have a big extension in Colorado as well. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot of news to cover here today. Uh, first up, let's get everybody up to date with the latest round of NHL note, news and notes from the injury front. Um, in Boston, defenseman Derek Forbort, we found out today that he will not return before the end of the regular season. Sounds like there is a possibility he could play in the playoffs. Not necessarily at the beginning of the playoffs, but the way things sound, I guess we'll have to wait and see further updates on that. But he's definitely done for the regular season. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens will be getting a bit of a boost tonight. Both uh, longtime veteran Brendan Gallagher and youngster Kirby Doc both making a return to the Montreal lineup tonight after an extended absence on both fronts. Gallagher has missed a lot of time this year in the past few years. Uh, we'll see how their returns go and hopefully they can remain healthy to finish out the rest of the regular season. Uh, the New York Rangers are finally getting defense with Ryan Lindgren back. Uh, he's been out for an extended time as well, dating back before the deadline. And the Seattle Kraken today also announced that John Eden is going to be out for about 12 weeks after requiring surgery for a lower body injury. Uh, last night we saw the Ottawa Senators beat the Penguins 2-1. to And rookie goaltender Dylan Ferguson making his first NHL start gets his first NHL win. Ferguson had previously made one appearance back in the very first season for the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, of course, if you remember back that far, the Golden Knights had a ton of goaltender injuries that year. He was originally drafted by Dallas, but was traded uh, to the Golden Knights in, uh, that summer around the time of their expansion draft. And with all the injuries, he was actually recalled from junior on an emergency basis. And since then, he's obviously played between the American Hawk League and the East Coast League. Uh, was recently traded to Ottawa uh, through their minor league team. Uh, from the Toronto Marlies, who's basically given away for nothing but for, for future considerations. Made 48 saves last night in his first NHL start, which is pretty close to an NHL record. Uh, unfortunately, though, today uh, they play again against the Pittsburgh, the Boston Bruins, or after battling, battling Pittsburgh last night. And there was some talk that even though you wouldn't normally see a new goalie like that play back to backs, maybe he would cope again tonight against the Bruins. But apparently, they had to recall Kevin Mandeley's on an emergency basis. Because uh, I guess he woke up today and Ferguson is uh, under the weather, so to speak. It's a non-COVID illness is what they're calling it. So he's uh, already out after one game. But hopefully be able to come back and see if he can't duplicate that performance here in the near future. We have another prospect signing today as well. The New York Rangers have signed left-wing prospect Brett Berard, who's 20 years old. A little bit on the small side, 5'9", 155 pounds. He was the fifth-round pick in 2020. He's played three years of college hockey at Providence College, and this contract for his ELC will kick in next year. But for the time being, he's also signed an American Hockey League tryout, so he will be able to report to their AHL team and finish out the campaign to get a taste of pro hockey uh, to kind of start the adjustment phase. But Brett Burrard certainly had a pretty good college career. was a very interesting prospect for the Rangers, and he'll be able to make the jump to pro hockey uh, a little bit now of a full-time starting next year we also got a big contract extension in colorado today head coach jared bednar has signed a three-year contract extension we're going to be just shy of five million dollars per season so that's a, a, a pretty hefty payday and a well-deserved extension of course the avalanche won the stanley cup last year uh this contract will take them to uh, um, you know until the end of the 26th season uh by the time that contract is done that'll be I believe like a full decade as the Avalanche bench boss, which is quite impressive because, I mean, right off the bat, after his first season, there were some that were calling for him to be let go after an abysmal season, but that certainly was not really on him after Patrick Wall left abruptly uh, late in the summer. Bednar was hired with not a lot of time to prepare for the season. Uh, Joe Sacking certainly cut him some slack, and things rebounded quickly after that, which was certainly the right move. Uh, I know a few years back when they had an earlier playoff exit in the second round. Some were thinking maybe he was tied for a change, but Sackick stuck with his guy, and they eventually got to the Stanley Cup last year, and now here we go with another extension. I think he's a terrific coach. Seems to be a great fit there. There's a lot of players been there a long time, 
So certainly a very much well-deserved contract extension for Coach Bednar. I would suspect as we're getting, you know, relatively close down to the end of the regular season, there's a few other, you know, GMs, coaches that the futures are you know, not necessarily the most certain right now that we probably will, will getting more of an indication on if they're going to be extended or not and some of these uh, changes that might be happening as we get into the offseason. Now we get a big announcement from the NHL regarding their jerseys and uniforms. Of course, right now those are provided by Adidas. We know the NHL contract was running out with Adidas here soon, and they were looking for a new supplier and retailer of their jerseys, and they've decided to partner with Fanatics. Now, of course, Fanatics is a brand that I also partner with as well. Uh, we do have an affiliate link, and uh, I know many of you have made purchases through Fanatics to help support the channel, which is greatly appreciated. So certainly, uh, you know, but this is a great uh, bit of business for them. They also got a 10-year contract, which is the surprising part. Uh, I'm not super shocked that they partnered with Fanatics in a way because they already were working with them in a lot, a lot of ways. Fanatics already ran the NHL.com shop. They obviously produced a lot of NHL licensed merchandise. Um, they were not providing the uniforms, obviously, for the players. But, you know, at the same time, you know, there was already an existing working relationship. It's rumored that some other you know, manufacturers in the sporting world were not overly interested. Some thought that maybe Nike might get involved. Uh, but I've seen rumors that uh, Nike didn't even submit a bid, um, but they didn't see the uh, the profit margins be where they would like them to be, and this really weren't all that interested. We've seen them previously work with Reebok, CCM in the past, of course Adidas now. There's almost a reason why some of these manufacturers have not, you know, stuck with it for longer than what they did. Uh, makes you wonder what the, you know, from a financial standpoint, profit margin standpoint, if it's just not worth it to some of these companies. But I guess one good thing, the quality for the player uniforms uh, should remain the same with Fanatics. Um, because they are going to be using the same uh, plant. They're going to be made in the exact same place that they're being produced now, which is in Canada and Quebec. So uh, from the player standpoint, uh, there should be no changes. I know I see a lot of people commenting today with concerns. I know uh, even myself here, when I became a Fanatics uh, partner promoting their stuff, I, I personally have never had a bad experience with Fanatics, but I know some feel that there certainly is a quality um, you know, a concern, you could say, not quite the same level that we're seeing with the Adidas jerseys right now. I guess we'll have to see long-term and get more details here as this all gets worked out. Um, but obviously, like I said, if, to me, it wasn't been a huge shocker that they ended up being the brand that uh, the NHL is going to be working with here. One thing we do know is that we won't be seeing any more reverse retros. Uh, obviously, Adidas put out you know, two different batches of those are at the, the reverse retros the first time and then the 2.0 ones. And that was, which is kind of a weird thing, but they were meant to be rare and a little bit scarce, um, which I never really completely understood when you're trying to grow the game and you're trying to um, sell more merchandise, increase your revenues. Why would you create something that is not readily available at, at, at all times? I mean, there are some pretty cool concepts in those, um, you know, in, in those groups of jerseys and, why wouldn't you want to sell as many of them as possible? I don't quite get that, but hey, it is what it is. We'll have to see where this goes. Like I said, there seems to be a mixed variety of reports. Um, as I said, myself, I've had good experience with Fanatics, but I know some of you haven't, and I guess we'll have to see. I would suspect that they're going to be expected to, uh, you know, certainly make an increase of uh, quality and, uh, you know, quality control. And obviously, you know, from a service standpoint, live up to what the NHL is going to expect here. This is going to be a major boost for them. It's going to be the first time that Fanatics are the main supplier of authentic jerseys, not just your your replicas. So um, obviously we'll have to see where this goes. But certainly a, a bit of a surprising announcement for some. And we'll see how things move forward. Uh, we also saw a big update today in an article from the Ottawa Sun and Bruce Garriock on the sale of the Ottawa Senators. Uh, we've always talked about this a lot lately. It's one of the top topics until this gets finalized. Uh, right now, the Ottawa Senators are basically in, heading into what we call phase two of the sale. Um, uh, Bruce Kerriak's article confirms that Gary Bettman will be in town with the Ottawa team uh, and mayor on Monday, as well as six potential buyers will be visiting the uh, nation's capital in the next week. Uh, obviously, Gary Bettman's going to spend time uh, not only with the team and will attend the game, but it's also going to be meeting with Mayor Mark Sutcliffe as well as officials from the NCC, which will be the ones overseeing 
the potential project at Upright and Flats for their new arena that they are interested in building and have you know, currently preferred bidder status on right now. Uh, but we did learn a little bit more in this article about some of those groups as well. Of course, we have the Remington Group, uh, which is developer, uh, a development company led by billionaire Chris Brady, who's also partnered with Ryan Reynolds. We already know a fair bit of them. Uh, of course, you have Michael Anlauer and his group. Uh, he's a Toronto billionaire. Um, that's obviously, uh, you know, well known. And he's actually one that I didn't know, though, is that Farm Boy and Jeff York are aligning with the Anlauer group. I thought they were um, having their own separate bid, which is what we've heard from different reports, the way you made it sound, but they are working together. Uh, there's the Harlow Capital Group, which is basically the Kimmel Brothers, uh, who used to be minority owners of the Pittsburgh Penguins before the team sold to Fenway Group last year. There's Nico Sparks as well, who we talked about about yesterday, who we had learned might be the, the high bidder that came in above the $900 million mark. Uh, he's an LA-based tech uh, person who has a large group. Now, we've heard that that's not necessarily one that the NHL may not be considered a front runner, um, because even though they might have the high bid, uh, the structure might not be preferable to what the NHL wants. It sounds like, and we'll have to wait and confirm this once, you know, if we ever get more details confirmed, but essentially that he has a lot of smaller groups within the group. So it's not necessarily going to be one, you know, billionaire owner owning majority, or at least it doesn't sound that way. We'll have to see more on that. But there's also Rocco Giulio and his group. Of course, uh, Rocco Giulio has the Windsor based business, Rock Development. Uh, he apparently has some American investors that have partnered with him. Of course, Tulio also is the owner of the OHL's Oshawa General, so certainly already well accustomed to the hockey business. And then, of course, there's also uh, Graham Rooston, who's an owner of the Hockey News. Now, of course, that's one I was not aware of. Uh, he's also apparently going to be partnering with a group of First Nations, but we don't know much details on that. The Ottawa Sun was not able to verify anything more but it sounds like those are kind of considered your main six groups i mean there was rumored to be nine that's yet to be 100 percent confirmed or at least who they could be um but all these groups do make sense from different levels to some degree um we'll see i personally say that uh, i would think the uh, remington group and the anlauer group to me would be the ones that would be the most likely front riders you could probably throw Hartlow capital in there with the kibble brothers maybe being uh, you know, and not mixed too. Obviously, Batman and the NHL would already know them from being previous minority owners, so that's a possibility. And I could even see Rocco Tulio's group being more than the other ones that are more likely to, to get the deal done too. But hey, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, obviously, lots of uh, developments in that front, and be curious to see when we finally get more confirmed news on who the new owners are going to be. But that's going to be likely a few more weeks before we have a little bit more firm details on where things are going. Now, in a trade section of the video today, I want to talk about Philadelphia Flyers goalie Carter Hart. Now, we do know that the Flyers are very much likely to be heavily involved in the trade market this offseason. As we approach the NHL draft near the end of June, I fully suspect them to be heavily involved in going into more of a rebuild. I mean, they may not want to call it that, but I know Daniel Briere, the new interim GM of the Flyers, was not afraid to use that word. It's the first time we've really heard Philadelphia in a rebuild in the same sentence, Chuck Fletcher never wanted to use it. Previous regimes and other uh, you know, alumni that's heavily involved with the uh, you know oversight committee or whatever you want to call them, it seems like they kind of secretly run the team behind the scenes, or at least that's what some people think. Uh, they never wanted to do a rebuild either, which is probably long overdue. But one of their top assets to trade this summer to really get a good haul moving forward is goalie Carter Hart. Uh, obviously, 24 years old. Doesn't really make sense for him to be there during his prime years. Uh, when the team is going to be, you know, near the bottom of the standings, rebuilding for a while. Uh, he's got one more year left as an RFA. Uh, it's going to be, about, you know, more on the contract and then an RFA after that. You know, it makes more sense if he's going to sign a contract extension in the next year that he extend with a new team, get a fresh start, and be with a team that's going to be on the rise. And there is some speculation that uh, Ken Hughes and the Montreal Canadiens might be very interested in this goaltender. Now, of course, they already have Jake Allen and Samuel Montebo right now. Uh, but obviously, there's always possibility of upgrading. I don't know that either or the goalie of the future. I think Jake Allen realizes and understands that his time in Montreal is uh, probably going to be the next couple of years as they help take this team to the next stage. I know Samuel Montebo, for the most part, has done an admirable job. But really, I think Carter Hart will be a substantial upgrade over him if they had to include him in a trade or move him along to 
get playing time. To me, I think you'd probably want to hang on to Jake uh, as a veteran uh, to be kind of the mentor for whoever the goal is, because even Carter Hart, not all of the old, uh, could benefit from, you know, having an older guy around that's been around uh, the NHL for a while. I still have Caden Primo. I don't know that they have the utmost confidence that he will be the goalie of the, of the future as they had hoped for some time. Um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see where things go. But the Montreal Canadiens certainly do have a lot of assets that would be intriguing to the Flyers to try to pull off this type of trade. Now, I don't know that they'd want to include their 2023 uh, you know, first-round pick. I'll say that's going to probably wait and see where the draft lottery goes and where they're picking. Uh, quite possible they're going to be on the top four or five. Even, you know, it could be a little bit lower. There's still some games to play, a little bit of draft lottery luck or not so good luck. So we don't know how that's going to finish out. Um, so maybe if it was low enough, maybe they might consider that. But otherwise, they have some interesting young players that I'm sure would be very interesting to the Philadelphia Flyers to consider on a potential trade. Now, it's also quite possible we might see the, the Montreal Canadiens involved with Pierre-Luc Dubois this offseason as well. That's been heavily documented and discussed that he wants to make his way to Montreal. Uh, he's got one more year before he's a UFA. Uh, not likely wanting to re-sign with the Winnipeg Jets. So uh, Montreal might be a very interesting team to watch this offseason, making some big moves to really take this rebuild to the next phase for next year. So let me know your thoughts. Should Carter Hart be a target for the Montreal Canadiens, the rebuilding Flyers, or are we going to be looking to move some of these top players that they do have that doesn't make sense really for them to keep as they kind of move forward and try to go uh, deeper into this rebuild to build up from the ground up. Let me know your thoughts on that potential that everything else discussed here today down in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.